Off the southeastern coast of India, a 30-mile-long shoal exists just under the ocean. A bridge of sand and other debris stretching all the way to the northwestern coast of Sri Lanka, separating the Gulf of Manor on one side from the Palk Strait on the other. Located less than four feet under the water in most places, this shoal has seriously hindered regional trade for centuries, allowing only small boats and dinghies to navigate the area while forcing large ocean-going vessels to travel all the way around Sri Lanka, adding an extra 250 miles to any journey. In 2005, the Government of India announced approval for the monumental Sedusamudra Canal project, which would dredge the ocean floor in order to create a channel through the area for large ships, significantly boosting the efficiency of regional trade. There was only one problem. The debris under the water wasn't just any shoal, but a place of preeminent spiritual importance to millions, even billions of people. For Hindus, it is an ancient causeway constructed by the legendary figure Rama to facilitate his army crossing from India to Sri Lanka to rescue his abducted wife Sita from the evil King Ravana. Hindus do not view it as a natural shoal formation, but as an ancient man-made bridge known as Rama Setu, meaning the Bridge of Rama. Interestingly, historical record shows that what today is a shoal was in fact above water, a trans-variable bridge that could be crossed on foot until 1480 when it was breached by a storm and slowly overcome. Moreover, Islamic tradition tells of Adam, the first man who was also a 100 feet tall giant who fell on earth in Sri Lanka after his expulsion from heaven. In order to escape from the island and find Eve, he constructed a massive bridge to cross into mainland Asia like Hindus. Muslims also believe this is not just another ocean formation, but an ancient structure they call Adam's Bridge. In fact, one of the highest peaks in Sri Lanka is also named after Adam. The Adam's Peak, which according to the story, is the place where Adam first landed on Earth. On an altar, on the top of the peak, we can find a giant footprint, which is believed to be the footprint of Adam drawing pilgrims from all over the world to visit the holy place. Because of this deep religious significance, the Setusamudra Canal project immediately became the subject of great controversy when it was first announced causing an uproar amongst many politicians, religious groups, and ordinary people. And yet, if you venture to look more closely at the bridge and its mysterious creation, it becomes clear that the controversy goes deeper than religion, that it may in fact challenge humanity's established history and begin to reveal mythical secrets which have long been lost. The Ramayana is one of the two most important epics along with the Mahabharata in all of Hinduism composed over the course of nearly a millennium. It is made up of about 24,000 verses making it one of the largest ancient epics in world literature. Within these verses is a narration of the life of Rama, the legendary prince of the ancient kingdom of Kaushala, which is said to have existed millions of years in the past in Treta Yuga, a mythological period of time that began 2,165,000 years ago. The portion of this story, which is most important here, can be picked up when Rama enters into exile in the forest with his wife Sita. During this time, Sita is abducted by Ravana, a demon king of Lan, a rival kingdom seeking to recover. His wife Rama raises a mighty army of creatures called the Nara, human-like monkeys who live in the forest and sets off in pursuit. After some time, Rama and his army reach the coast of India, from which they can see across the ocean to the distant shores of Sri Lanka. where Sita has been taken yet with a turbulent ocean blocking the path of Rama's army and no way to get across. It seems their pursuit will end in failure. However, then Rama begins the construction of a massive bridge with the help of his army of monkey people and a Venara architect named Nala with the ingenuity of Nala. The bridge is built from India to Sri Lanka in only five days, allowing Rama's mighty army to cross the ocean. As the Ramayana describes that colossal bridge, which was broad, well-constructed, glorious, well-postured, and held together firmly, looked beautiful, like a separating straight line in the ocean. The highly terrific sound of the ocean was covered up by the great sounds of the terrific monkeys who were crossing the sea. 
Once in Sri Lanka, Rama defeats Ravana in battle, killing him and rescuing his wife before returning home as the incredible story concludes. What is most important about this story is that for many Hindus, it is not merely a myth, but a record of history, not allegory or religious teaching, but fact, this forms the core of the debate over Ram Sethu. Is it a construction built by the patriarchs of Hinduism, millions of years in the past and recorded in the Ramayana? Or is it simply a natural formation explained by those who didn't know through a myth taken as truth? When the government of India began putting together what would become the Sethu Samudra Canal project in the early 2000s, they knew it would be controversial. For this reason, one year before the project was announced, They enlisted the services of Dr. Badri Narayana, the director of the Geological Survey of India, to carry out a study of Ram Sethu, presumably in an effort to collect evidence that the shoal was a natural formation, which could then be used against opponents and critics. However, when Badri Narayana and his team began to drill boreholes along the bridge, what they found shocked them six meters below the sandy surface of the bridge. They found a layer of coral and boulder sitting on top of another layer of sand, some 13 to 16 feet deeper, which in turn sat on hard rock formations below that. The reason this was so shocking was described by Badri Narayana corals are found only on rocks and such hard surfaces here below the corals and boulders. We are getting loose sand, which means it is not natural. In other words, the coral could not have grown there on its own. It must have been deposited there by somebody. With this discovery, Badri Narayana knew he needed to explore the bridge further. So he sent divers down to examine the boulders, which mixed with the coral below the surface. When he did, things got even more astonishing, and in Badri Narayana's words on top of the loose sand, which was formed when the sea level was low, our divers found boulders. Boulders normally occur on land, and they are a typical riverine character. They're not a local marine formation. We feel somebody dumped the boulders to use them as a causeway. The boulders on top of the loose sand are transported to that place as they are found above loose sand. It is quite obvious that they were brought and dumped there by somebody. All these things lead us to believe that 2 to 2.5 meters of packed rubble or material appear to be a modern-day causeway for 30 kilometers. Nobody dumps materials like that. Obviously it was dumped to use it to cross the sea. Far from proving that Rama Setu was a natural formation had actually come to the opposite conclusion. The evidence in his words clearly establishes the fact that Ram is very much man-made. Another interesting thing we have to mention is that according to the legend, the bridge was built with stones that do not sink in the water because of the blessings of Lord Varuna and the name of Lord Rama written on them. Curiously, Every year, people near the area constantly discover stones that like in the legend, do not sink. Countless YouTube videos are posted of these discovery, and when the stones are placed in water, they always appear to float instead of sinking. While proving that Rama Sethu is man-made does not prove it was built by Rama. As the Roman that describes it does raise some interesting questions. If it was in fact man-made as Badri Narayana was asserting. Then who could have built such an astonishing structure, a bridge across the ocean that far in the past? To begin to answer this question, we might return to the Ramayana, which in fact contains a detailed description of Rama Setu construction. Then being sent by Rama, hundreds and thousands of monkey heroes jumped in joy on all sides towards the great forest. Those army chiefs of monkeys who resembled mountains broke the rocks and trees there and dragged them away towards the sea. The huge-bodied monkeys with mighty strength uprooted elephant-sized rocks and mountains and transported them by mechanical contrivances. Some others drew up strings a hundred long in order to keep the rocks in a straight line. Some monkeys were holding poles for measuring the bridge, and some others collected the material. Reeds and logs resembling clouds and mountains, brought by hundreds of monkeys led by the command of Rama, fastened some parts of the bridge. The Nala the strong and illustrious son of Vishwakarma, and an excellent monkey built the bridge across the sea as truly as his father would have built it. What type of technology did they have that allowed them to complete the building of a bridge, which even today would be exceedingly difficult? One thing is for sure whatever the mechanical thing is used to move and stack huge boulders. This is not the only time seemingly impossible advanced technology appears in the Ramayana. When within the Ramayana, the demon king, Ravana, abducts Rama's wife, Sita. If this is true, then it is possible that the secrets of this advanced ancient technology remain hidden right under our noses. After many, 
discoveries, scholars quickly realized that many thousands of previously undiscovered Sanskrit manuscripts were lying forgotten in Tibetan temples already some. 500 bundles of palm maize with many thousands of lines of ancient text have been recovered and await translation. This would be an entirely different origin story for human beings than that presented in our history books today. If Rama was really built 1.7 million years ago, then that would be the time when Homo erectus roamed the earth. The Homo erectus was the first species to form groups work with tools and even wear clothes, mainly animal skins. By 2007, the Supreme Court of India had issued an order, putting a temporary stop to the project and urging the government to examine alternatives. Shortly thereafter, the government filed an affidavit with the court stating that there was no evidence Rama said who had been constructed by people despite their own scientists. Dr. Badri Narayana having found evidence to suggest it was only a few years prior. This project is currently ongoing and many are waiting with bated breath to find out what conclusions may be reached. Is Ram man-made? Perhaps more importantly, if it is, what else might scientists find? What other secrets may be revealed? Curiously, one of the stated purposes of the study is not just to determine if Rama Setu is an artificial structure, but to look for submerged habitations that may be around it. In fact, one scientist who is part of the study has already insisted he is 100% sure we will find archaeological remains. What did he mean by this? Are scientists expecting to find the remains of an ancient civilization lost beneath the waves and my? These remains belong to the lost continent of Kumari Kandam. That's all for this video. PLS like share and subscribe.